quite frankly, it's just up in our community. And I said, I know people get tired of hearing me say it, but we are scared as black people in America. Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. Because you don't know. You have no idea. It just it hurts. It hurts. That was LeBron James back in uh, August of 2020 uh, talking about this. In this particular case, it was Jacob Blake. But he's talking about in general when black folks leave the house and they're not sure if that police officer is looking at them sideways. Or in this particular case that we're gonna talk about if some random other citizens are looking at them sideways. And what kind of help the potential victim could get from this. Um, let's go to details of this particular story of Rashim Rael Carter. It was put to my attention by someone on Twitter and I'm glad uh, that he did. His aunt posted this on her Facebook page. I won't read the whole thing, it's a bit lengthy, but she said it's been 30 days since my family has had any contact with my nephew, with uh, Rashim Rael Carter. Uh, this has been pure agony and pain for my entire family. This is at the beginning of November. So she said it's been a month since they'd seen uh, uh, Rashim. There's images of him there in her post. And sadly, a month after he came up missing, this is what went down. A Jefferson County family is now distraught after learning that their missing loved one won't be coming home. It's a possibility that the remains of Rashim Rael Carter were found Wednesday, a month after he disappeared. Carter told relatives that he was being threatened by people he knew. We need to know, we want to know what happened and the reason is what Carter's cousin Shonda Wright said. Rashim Carter, who was 25, was last seen outside of a Super 8 hotel on October 2nd in Laurel. It's about 30 minutes outside of Taylorsville where Carter had been contracted to work. And according to reports, his remains were found on private property in a wooded area in Taylorsville. This is all down in Mississippi. Uh, but the family says their son was threatened and stalked by white men in the area and want to see a full investigation into their son's disappearance and, and his possible death just before they did find out. In a Facebook post, family members described details of the events after Carter went missing under the mysterious circumstances. And according to the post, the day before Carter's disappearance, he went to the police department in Taylorsville and informed officers that men were after him and that he feared for his life. He went to the cops. Carter didn't have a car at the time, it was, and he asked the police for a ride to the Super 8 Hotel in Laurel. But officers refused that, telling Carter that it was outside of their jurisdiction. He returned to the police station again on foot early the next morning, pleading with the police to help him. But once again, they refused. These are stories that were being told by his family about what it was because they were, he was also relaying stories to them while he was distraught and trying to figure out why these folks seemingly were after him. More, he informed his mother that there were white men after him and that if something were to happen to him to start the investigation there. He did speak with his mom, Tiffany, about a white truck and, a white, and white males in there threatening to harm him. His cousin Shonda wrote, Wright also told. She, uh, he did give her the names, so lots of information that he was working on. Last part about this, the family also said they will not stop until they get justice for Rashim in what some could, uh, some say could be a possible hate crime. Why did police refuse to help him after he told them he was in trouble? Why hasn't there been an investigation into the men Carter identified? If nothing else, if they didn't believe him, if, uh, if, if Rashim, well, someone making up a story and there's these three folks following him, maybe he's like uh, detached from reality. Any of these things that the police might possibly believe if someone comes to you, maybe investigate it and then you can clear the slate of that. And be like, this was a false uh, report, nothing's really happening. We checked him out, we went to the Super 8 Hotel to see if anything was going down since he says his life is in danger and then you can write it off. But nothing happened. Now, to answer that question of why, had, why, had, why there hasn't been an investigation that his family asked, I've been watching this documentary series on HBO, uh, Adrian, and this stuck out to me. This one part. Let's look at a bit of this teaser trailer from this docu series. Um, it's uh, and it's called Black and Missing. It's it's poignant stuff. Let's watch. There's so many missing people of color in the U.S. African Americans remain missing four times longer than white Americans. That number is alarming. We hear from families all the time. The police is turning us away, the media wouldn't respond. Looking for a missing daughter. And it drove me and my sister-in-law, Natalie, to want to do something about it to help these other families. 
So that series goes into the work that they're doing separate from the police, separate from any other kind of investigative sources to find folks that are missing because it's just the standard thing with cops, with the police departments. It's not a priority, which they point out in multiple parts about that. It's not a priority to look for missing people, especially if it's been a couple of days. Their priority is they're laid in other ways, especially detectives. What they'll check out is after the crime happens. Let's find out how this person ended up dead, not how to prevent it from happening. What are your thoughts on this, Adrian? You know, just it, it, it seems like it's always the same thing and nothing changes. And yet so many politicians and leaders want our votes. But at the same time, when it comes to valuing our lives, we see when it comes to particularly social services and also particularly law enforcement, that it's not there in terms of providing us with the exact same service and degree of protection as they do white people. The fact that this young man went for help multiple times to officers and they disregarded him and sent him away and now he's gone and we do not know where he is. It's incredibly disheartening. We we see individuals who are black all the time be hurt and mistreated and stalked Ahmaud Aubrey, you know, all of these people out there for centuries and and the thing is, is a lot of people are capitalizing on knowing that law enforcement will do nothing if we go away or we go missing. Yeah, and there's injustice. It's as simple as what did you do to get the job for? Like, isn't isn't it exciting to find something where you're like, maybe I can crack this? Maybe this is something I can do to help people. What was the original motivation for you to take this job? Now, for anyone who may be saying like, well, you know, white folks come up missing all the time and they don't find them and police maybe have an action on that. I agree with you because I think the standard process is to not do anything about it when it's at that stage. The difference here is like with anything when there's insufficiencies in it. The more and more of of the types of folks in society that we believe don't aren't worthy of that attention, it happens in a larger scale. Yes, white folks get attacked by cops. Yes, white folks get shot by cops when they don't have the gun on them as well too. It happens at a disproportionate rate with other folks is what this whole point of this is. So when there's problems, the problems are increasing when it's certain folks in society. When they think society doesn't care about them, why should I? Am I gonna risk my time and my life to go and help someone who no one really cares about? Because that's in, internally the way people think. And honestly, it spreads to all of us. This isn't just all oh, white guys think this. It spreads to all of us. We all live in this same society. And um, so I don't know if I can get to the bottom of this. They did put up a, a GoFundMe for uh, expenses as they're looking for legal processes behind this. And also, uh, there was one part about this that actually stood out to me when I read a little bit of the uh, of the GoFundMe and recouping some salaries and, and like work that many members of his family have had to lose in there how distraught they are and how they're also trying to figure this whole thing out on their own. It's a full time job. You guys should check out that docu series on HBO because that's one of the things exactly what they're talking about. Those two women, it's now their job to look for other folks, kids and loved ones because no one else will. <laughs> Imagine that life you have to live now.